Hello and welcome back to Let's Play Black Geyser with me, Bring It On. Now let's talk to these people. Out of my way. Raj, Soraka, and Assassin. Gentlemen, I merely wish to be on my way. I have no quarrel with you. Hmm, what's going on here? Please, I have nothing left I can give to your master. That is not so, Soraka. You know it is not so. The one thing that you indisputably have is that which we've come for. Then why talk at all? Why not just plant a blade in my back? Because I want to see the fear in your eyes before you die. Well, I'll leave that woman alone. Walk away, Rillo. We're only after her. You really, really stoop so low as to harass their own kind for coin. We have business with this one, Rillo. We intend to get paid. Take your leave, and you'll get paid too, in a different sort of coin. A young lady, you have some business with these men. Call me Soraka, please. Unfortunately, yes, business of a kind. They're here on behalf of their master, Elenuator. I'm glad it's, this was voice acted so I know how to pronounce that. Wasn't Elenuator your master as well? A master of all Rillo? Not all Rillo, no. I no longer answer to Elenuator. I've turned to the light of Alenarius. To him I pray now. And to him I have consecrated my faith. Elenuator has reacted badly to my decision. There. I know this filthy heretic's crime. Get out of the way so we can do our job. I don't know for certain that we'd win in a straight fight. I imagine the amount of noise we could raise together will rouse a score or two of other folk from their bread and ale. You care so little who witnesses your crimes. Adarni interfering. Very well. Read the fresh air a while longer, Soraka. But to you new friends, I say this. Any associate of this heretic will be marked uh, just the same. Run like the cowards you are. Don't antagonize them. I just chased them off for you. Why would you... Hmm. Uh, you handled yourself well. As did you. I'd rather not dwell on the outcome should you have not... Should you not have. Anyway, you have my thanks. I'm a cleric of Alnarius, adept at the healing arts, and also capable in a fight. Perhaps our skills might complement each other. Uh, yes, agreed. Welcome to the party. Thank you. Let me know if you need healing. Any healing. Gotta skip words. What? Yes, yes. Alright, so what is she? Yes. A Rillo cleric. The higher focus and intelligence. Decent physique. Alright. Two points into brewing and drying. One into learning and research. Right, so she has different class skills. She's proficient with small blades and rods and staves. Alright, so theology enables additional dialogue choices themed around faith, but besides adding choices, it increases the bargain and persuasion score when in dialogue with other priests, religious or spiritual characters and spirits. Affected by charisma, focus, and modifiers. Attend to wounds. Offers the ability to heal party members' injuries during a rest. Skill increases the base amount of health regained by all group members during resting, at all locations. Multiple characters can take this skill to increase its effects. Affected by intelligence, focus, physique, and modifiers. Looks like every class gets a... Resting, heal ability. And a uh, dialogue ability. Or skill. A prey. Prey lets the cleric talk to their deity, Alnarius, the king god. The skill will impart one of various boons to the user when selected before resting. However, it is up to Alnarius to decide the exact nature of it. Affected by charisma, focus, intellect, and modifiers. Then abolish curses. Offers the ability to purify magical items that are otherwise cursed. While cursed items offer some negative effects in turn for the powerful advantages they give, purified items will only add positive effects to their wearers. Affected by focus and intelligence. That's neat. I haven't played a game with uh, cursed items in a while. I guess I should be careful what I equip. Let's try some spells. Alright, so Hand of Mercy. 
Natural energy issues forth in the caster's hands to heal their target. The target is healed for 15 health points. Peace. Now this spell takes away the will to cause harm to others from its target. The affected target is pacified. Then armor of Onarius. Onarius will protect his children in their hour of need, dressing the caster in brilliant armor made of light. This armor requires no proficiency, does not interfere with spellcasting. Increases the caster's resistance to slashing, stabbing, and pulse and blow damage by 30% for 48 turns. How do I open up her spell book? Uh, let me look. Alright, V. Alright, so I don't know what the difference between base energy and elevated energy spells are. But she has some other... Spells. We also have Serenity. The spell can be used to restore the combatant or combatant nature of creatures to its original state. Pacified effect is removed from the target if present. The target also gains alert. Alright, so we have Never Sleep. The spell causes a heightened sense of alertness in its target, waking them from, uh, waking them from sleep. The induced stress that borders anxiety will also keep the target awake for a while. Removes sleep from and grants alert to the affected target. We already read Armor of Onarius, and then Red Sun Rises. <laughs> the Lord of the Rings quote. That conjures a blood red sun to rise over a target, granting them bravery and restoring their will to fight. The target gains strengthened and inspired. I want to have these prayer peeds. Uh, prayer peeds, what am I saying? Prayer beads. <laughs> Where the will? Yes. Go ahead. It's Go early ahead. in the morning. What next? Ready to serve. So that should give her an extra spell slot, right? A grand level one base spell slot three. What next? Alright. If you say so. And someone pointed out that I missed a chest inside the general store, so we'll check that out, go to the tavern, and then we'll try and pursue some of these side quests outside of the city, just to mix things up. Where's the fight? Something you want bashed? Actually, now that it's nighttime, I if these guards are still over here guarding the, uh, the stairwell. What? Potion of Contentment. I grant the user a 20% bonus to heat resistance, a 10% bonus to resistance to poison and acid, 10% bonus to maximum hit points for 15 seconds. Then Potion of Gnashing Teeth. Grants the user a 20% bonus to resistance to strain and pain, a resistance to pulse and blow, a 10% bonus to resistance to poison and acid, a 5% bonus to defense and damage for 10 seconds. What? Yes, yes. Nope, they're still over there. So be it. Out of my way! What? Lord Fiffin, Lord Smedric, Viala Adelis, Lord Tripe, Drunken Sellsword, and Carmina. And a cook. I am digging the soundtrack. Hello. Sir, my friend must ask you to leave. The kitchen is off limit to limits to guests. Talk to Carmina by the bar if you need anything. 
All right, well, let's talk to her. Well, let's loot her stuff first, then we'll talk to her. Dust of Strange Seduction. <laughs> it causes attraction to the target for six seconds. When the attraction effect ends, it causes confusion to target for six seconds. The duration of the attraction and confusion effects, the target suffers a minus one penalty to focus. Opposed by resistance to illusion and manipulation. So I did get a tooltip saying that each round lasts five seconds. That what? lasts just over yes, yes. a round or a turn, I guess is what the game calls them. If anyone were to ask, I'd compare Lady Viala's exquisite presence to the light of dawn. Ah, I'd never compare Lady Biala's a lovely, I'm assuming I'm saying that right, Biala, lovely visage to anything so harsh as that. I think the reflection of moonlight on a still pond is more apt. My lords are too kind, but you know, I'm finding it a titch stuffy in here. I believe I will step out for some air. Let me fan you, milady. I too carry a fan for such occasions. Mine is fashioned from pheasant. Bah. Thirty wild creatures are pheasants. My fan is fashioned from peacock feathers. Step aside, poppers. My fan is crafted from the feathers of the legendary phoenix. In summer it cools thee, and in winter it warms. Really, my lords, I have a needlepoint back at my apartments that I'm most eager to complete. If you'll excuse me. A nonsense, Lady Biala. Can I go an hour longer without you choosing me over these two scoundrels? I cannot wait another minute until you select me over these two vagabonds. A second, me, nincompoops. <laughs> what spectacle these men make of themselves. A dwarf woman would know how to handle such a situation. A gentle rap on the temple with the backside of an axe. Let's see if we can help her out, Dongar. If you say so. Alright, give me just a second. The Cellsor has anything unique to say? Nope. Alright. Where is the... Yes? We're thirsty work! This becomes a fight. I want her in the back. Yes. Ugh. Lord Smedric, as much as your poetry is alarmingly metaphorical, I still must insist that you speak to no one regarding your thoughts on my resemblance to a flower bud ready to open. Of course, you can actually ask your companions directly. Uh, Helgenhar, can you think of some way to uh, scare these ninnies off? Haha, uh -huh. yes, I believe I can. The gem on your diet, Milady, is quite remarkable. We're in the middle of a conver. It is indeed. You have a discerning eye for stones. I expect no less from your people. Thank you, Milady. But I wonder, do you know that such a gem often has a withering effect on those whom it is pointed? A kind of slow acting magical poison. The bigger the gem, the worse the effect. And yours is quite the biggest I've ever seen. Hmm. I felt that I did know that at some point, but somehow it slipped my mind. Quite an interesting bit of trivia, my lords. Don't you agree? I must take my leave, Lady Biala. Do do you know? I'm feeling rather ill, milady. Adieu. I don't want to get magically poisoned. That was neatly done. Who do I have to thank for my rescue? I mean, actually, you have Helgen hard to think, but uh, I'm Dongar. Glad to be of service. I am the Lady Biola of the Feldegug, darling of the court and spellweaver extraordinaire. But of course, you know all that. I can't say that I do. You honestly don't know me. How delightful. I'm so tired of the endless legions of fawning earls and viscounts and hangers on. One can hardly walk down the street here without tripping over them. And if you don't know me, you must be Nuda Isselbright. A uh, doubly delightful. Well, I'm very pleased to meet you. What brings you to the capital? I 
I'm the heir to Lord Espen, but this being my first visit to the capital, I have no idea where, uh, what to do about it. Ah, what luck. The disposition of noble titles is practically a second career of mine. You must allow me to accompany you. I'll make sure you find what you wish to know, and thereby repay the good turn you, uh, you've you done me by disposing of those well-bred parasites. Ah, that seems fair. Then we're agreed. I suggest we try the palace first, or the Hall of Records. Yes. That's another companion. Look her spells separately in just a second. I'm listening. Go ahead. I'm always ready. Well, she too can summon a wolf. Uh, what do we have here? Severing Sparkle. While of concentrated nature, energy is conjured at the caster's fingertips. This rolling ball of force can be hurled at a target to inflict serious damage. Target is dealt 4 to 6 heat and 3 to 5 pulse and blow damage. Then snow. To the very elemental essence of cold, and throw it at someone you don't like. Deals 3 to 7 cold damage to the target on impact. So she's a Feldegog Spellweaver. High intelligence and focus. Decent charisma. Different class skills. And uh, proficient with rods and staves. Right, so Prodigy enables additional dialogue choices themed around wizardry. Besides adding choices, it increases the bargain and persuasion score when in dialogue with other wizards, alchemists, diviners, and scholars. Created by Charisma, Focus, and Modifiers. So I wonder, in order to use that, if I have to select her to talk to the NPC, or if it's automatic when your party is interacting with somebody. Like if uh, the dialogue will automatically select her as the skill check. Arcane Studies. It has aptitude for elevated energy level spells, with increasing available casting slots for such spells, as well as decreasing the time needed to rest between casting them. Affected by intelligence, focus, and modifiers, cooldown between elevated energy level spells is decreased by up to 50%. A Magical Perception. Offers the ability to actively sense and disable hidden traps in the world. A trap sensed and disarmed using the Magical Perception skill must be at least of magical nature. Assessing traps is easier than disarming them. Affected by focus, intelligence, and modifiers. The magical warding offers the ability to erect a barrier of arcane force around a camp when resting at outdoor locations. A such a barrier will discourage wandering beasts and bandits from approaching the camp, increasing the chance for the group to be attacked during their rest. Affected by focus and intelligence, it decreases the chance for an ambush and the minimum distance needed from hostile creatures to rest by up to 50%. Okay. We already read Snow. Uh, fever. The spell sends a spell induced fever to attack its target, causing a sense of intense heat engulfing its body. Flicks weakness, throbbing, and toasting on the target. Then summon spiders. The spell summons a group of spiders at a desired location and range from the caster to aid in combat. Additional spiders are summoned at higher character levels. Then Stonewall. Sometimes all you need is a good, thick wall to solve your problems. Creates one of those which blocks movement and projectiles. Ride the lightning. Move like lightning and leave some behind for anyone unfortunate enough to be nearby. The caster quickly jumps away to a targeted location and range, while discharging a blast of lightning in a circular area around them. Targets caught in the discharge take pulse and blow and heat damage. We already read that. We know what Summon Wolf does because we have uh, that on our axe. But here it says, at higher character levels, additional wolves are summoned as well. An unbearable heat. Makes well-armored foes in their armor like a hot day in the sun, dealing progressively more heat damage over time to those wearing heavier armor. For five turns, deals one to two damage to lightly armored, uh, one to four for medium, and two to six for heavily armored enemies each turn. Has no effects on targets without armor. Add that to our list. It's also level three. Where's the fight? Let's head upstairs. Oh, sweet, two companions. One basically right after the other. Out of my way. What? Where's the will? 
Yes, uh. What? Uh. Yes, yes. Where's the fight? Something you want, if you say so. Alright, so I think we... I don't think we spoke to Carmina. Go downstairs and do that, and then we will, I think, leave the city. I think two of our quests take us outside the city. Out of my way. Hello. I'll take a seat. What can I get you today? Uh, what can you tell me about this place? Ah, you must be new here, surely. This is the Crooked Haggler. Finest inn you can find in Isselbright. The meat is cold, the beds are soft, the patrons, well, the patrons are a bit more rich, a bit more stuck up, and a bit less likely to stab you in the chest than in other places. I'd like to rent a room. Sure. Which one do you like? Oh boy. Oh, each character must be assigned a specific room. Oh, you can hire a guard. Okay, so you can be ambushed at night, that's cool. Alright, so uh, basic rooms. Basic rooms provide the bare minimum of comfort at a very low price. They consist of simple beds and tables with stools, not much else. So basic rooms restore more health to the party members than camping out in the wilderness. Uh, noble rooms, neat and tidy, equipped with comfortable rugs and a hearth to offer warmth. The beds are soft and spacious, ensuring sweet dreams for the wary traveler. Resting at noble rooms will restore a moderate amount of health to party members. Then a uh, king size room. These lodgings are divided into several private spaces and a dining room, complete with large windows and room service. King size rooms restore a large amount of health to party members during rest. And then Scriptorium. Not much is offered in ways of comfort, but it's a haven of peaceful study for scholarly types. I renting the Scriptorium will automatically identify some of the unidentified items in the party's inventory, based on their learning and research skill. Okay, so what I can do is give this to her. What? Mm -hmm. That's cool. That's a lot of a lot of uh, options, utility for just resting at the inn. So I will sleep like that. No, where else is gonna sleep up here? I need her to identify the gloves. That's really cool. Looks like even your maybe your party members that aren't directly in your party. Oh, no, it's just one more slot, I think. Either way. That's really neat. That's, a uh, didn't expect that much detail. Where's the yes, yes. Yes. So just break their old gloves, it looks like. The Alchemist gloves and. Oh, no, it's just another. Okay. This one dexterity, uh, plus 10 cold, heat, poison acid, pulse and blow, stabbing, and slashing resist. Then plus 15% to brewing and dry. It's actually really good at my. I'm listening. I'm always main ready. character it looks like where's the fight go ahead yes
Something All right, you let's look at our bashed. quest to see where we have to go for these. So Greybark Square, I assume, is inside the city somewhere. Uh, in competition, it defines, let's see, Sky Blooms. Small village south, I call it Scofarth, north of Blue Lake. <clears throat> As for the undead, I'm not sure where to start. I'm assuming there's a cemetery inside the city somewhere. So that must be here. If I had to guess. Out of my way. Well, for the sake of mixing things up, let's go see if we can get to uh, Scofarth and do that quest. So it looks like anywhere you've been previously, you can just travel directly to. In order to travel to new locations, you have to find the corresponding adjacent location and exit the right direction. What? Out of my way! Very reminiscent of another game that I, uh, that I've played before. Yes, yes. I'll sign you to the Espen Estate now. How am I supposed to get to this? Well, let's go to the estate. We have to exit from that place to the south. What? Out of my way! Alright, so I like how this keeps resetting. Oh, I don't save it. Never mind. That's on me. <laughs> what? Where's the wheel? Yes, yes. No, oh, crush him! Uh, let's get back if a little bit. So. Yes, yes. Where's the fight? You cannot stand against me! Go ahead, me. I'm going. Oh. Something you... Blood and bone! Oh, my hammer froze him. It does cold damage, that's cool. What next? Akana Zakti. Thirsty work this. There are a ton of bones here. Ready? Of course. Something I'm going. No! Where's the mercy? Fight? What? Something uh, maybe you should hold. So. Where's uh, the man, let's charge it. We'll be fine. Uh, we'll next? cast a couple of spells. Yes, I'm always ready. At least with her. 
I have to target magical perception to find traps. It's interesting. Where's the wheel? Yes, uh. What? Okay, the wolf took one hit for us. <laughs> Good job, Balto. You're in my way. Where's the fight? What? Yes, yes. Blood and bones. Good job, Scorpion. I think he blocked three attacks in a row. <laughs> I'm curious. Let's go this way. I wonder if we can get to Scofarth from this location. No, still can't. I wonder if we have to exit from the south of Merchant's Road. Go ahead. We'll find a solution. Something you want back. Oh, crush him! Put in some good work. We should be getting close to leveling up I'm as well. Listening. Ready to what serve. I feel like his XP hasn't gone up in in a long time. Where I'm going. He's been sitting at that. Let's see what what's the number? Eighteen oh four. Keep track of that because I don't think his has gone up. Yes. Yes. Oh, it's the Haunted Mansion now. Great. Well, maybe we'll find a uh, Lord Espen's sword. It wouldn't let us interact with it previously. Music is pretty cool. Alright, I'm going to call the episode here. In the next one, we'll explore the Haunted Mansion and then hopefully find a way to Scofarth. I still don't know how to, how to get to the town. Uh, we'll try exiting to the south of Merchant's Road. Yeah, we'll knock this out next time. Anyway, thanks for watching. Hope to see you guys in the next one.